So when we turn on the electric light, we just so happen we turn off the Milky Way. And when we turn on our TV, we turn off all our creative play. When we turn on the clothes dryer, we ignore the constant warming southern ray. When we turn on the light, we see lots of color, but there's much less time for gray. And we jump in our cars instead of just happening to stay. We move really, really fast, and we have no time to pray. When power outages come and some say they may stay, it just might be time for us to once again connect with that Milky Way. And what does she have to say? Yes, she is a she. She says, I'm made up of billions of stars, and I rotate through a 26,000-year cycle of days. No, you are very much a part of my cosmic rays. This timeline bears scrutiny, come what may. In the end, no, we will all be OK. We will all be OK. Thank you. Batter my heart, three-person God, for you as yet but knock, breathe, shine, and seek to mend, that I may rise and stand or throw me and bend your force to break, blow, burn, and make me new. I, like, a, like an usurped town to another do, labor to admit you, but oh, to no end. Reason, your viceroy and me, me should defend, but is captive and proves weak or untrue. Yet dearly I love you and would be loved fain, but am betrothed unto your enemy. Divorce me, untie, or break that knot again. Take me to you, imprison me, for I accept you enthrall me, never shall be free, nor ever chaste, except you ravish me. John Dunn. Thank you. Do not ask me why I'm smiling on a cold and cloudy day, or presume to think I'm lazy that I will not join the fray. If you're wondering why, I've turned my eye toward the better way. Like the first light of the morning touches bright the highest leaf. Like a truth that's slowly dawning to a world of disbelief. She has come to prove the very thing that I could not believe. And I have turned to listen to the words she brings to me. While across the cold, dark sea the war is raging. It's not hard to understand how the world can be set right when the sun comes round the farthest rim and pushes back the night. How the earth is born to light. It's not hard to understand the story of a woman and a man. Thank you. Once again, the season spins around to meet our purview. Under this sunless sky of impending storm, I sit amid the herbs of my garden. Heady scents of fennel, the spice of mint, earthiness of chive. The intoxication of lemon thyme and verbena and the calming smell of lavender. Waft over and around me as I brush against them. Each one cushions the long fall of the cherry-sized gems from this particularly lovely crabapple tree outside my window. Centerpiece of this garden, it was the grand gestured gift from a dear friend and memorializes the well-lived life of my father, now a dozen years gone. For many years now, I have witnessed her pink-cheeked blossoming, the sweet red buds popping as the wind warms. I look forward to the robin's return, her nest tucked into the tree's leafy loft, chicks peeping their hunger from downy bed. Even now they are calling for their supper, and each year at this time 
as apples plink against the windows and fall with abundant abandon into the scents that surround them, I take a notion to pluck and gather, to preserve and remember. Each year, I fail. The time for regretting is done. I cannot change my past transgressions, but I can get back to the root and the stem of life. As farmer's daughter's daughter, I determine that I am no longer able or willing to waste the sacred holiness of my blessings. Thus armed, I begin this harvest. Some fruit falls on the driveway, proverbial stony ground. Some has moldered, dropped too long ago to be used by my reckoning. Nonetheless, it will continue to please all manner of winged, buzzing, creeping things. The rest, none plucked before its own timing, drop ringing into the blue enameled bowl, soon to be turned into gifts to be shared. Ever dog by my side, I bind my wandering heart to this task and whisper a prayer of gratefulness for simple gifts and those profound. With this revelation newly captured, my memories grow as sweet as the promise of this fruit. And yet, if all I reap from this contemplation are these words, let me too be thankful. Early morning, dark and gray, Zeus is rumbling and peeling his way. First a soft and gentle call, listening to the raindrops fall. Then a pounding on the roof, tumbling, pouring on the ground, air hung heavy with its sound. He pauses and looks around. No one has risen to heed his call. He growls a deep rumble, strengthens his voice. He waits. Then peals and claps, his voice a command, arcing over the sleeping, sodden land, flashing his lightning to dare us awaken to voices not heard and steps never taken. He peals and flashes his truths in the soft morning air, still and quiet where we huddle with our heads buried under the covers, waiting for the storm to pass. He peels and speaks, then lights the air, asking us if we are there, asking us to see with clarity before he rumbles on to the next waiting town and is gone. Some of us dream new dreams and wonder where they came from. Reaching up slowly through the depths of unconsciousness while the birds eat their breakfast and morning convergence unafraid of the energy peeling round them. One more great loosening sends them to shelter. The clouds, opened by energy's light, fall dancing off the rooftops in delight. He crashes and roars in exultant might, shafting his bolts. They strike and strike and strike again. Are we listening? Heaven is not done with us yet. A prowling, hungry lion, he rumbles about the neighborhoods, softly on his paws of light, deeply in the dawn's twilight, his memory sounding through our feet to the very ground, its vibrations repeat. Listen, remember, be awake. I am never far from you, make no mistake. Be awake. Be aware, live this life if you dare to walk upon your own great purpose here, rumbling with me in the air, sounding truth and warning where they're needed, being the reins of love and healing heated by the heat-filled, heart-heavy, sleep-walking world. Thank you. Crossing the road from orchard to farmhouse, I pause mid-stride in the stunned surprise of unexpected recognition. Much as that morning in the Prado, when a bride on honeymoon in Spain, I turned and came face to face 
with a stateside acquaintance. Unknowingly, long on separate trajectories, we had traveled from that crowded city of our past to meet and nod in wonderment, odd witnesses reaffirming the world's smallness. Now, this distant July noon, visiting Old Frog Pond Farm, I sense again that vertigo of the once familiar struck incongruous. A mimosa, constitutionally unsuited to this New England climate, reels me back to my adolescence when I knew well those supple, smooth-barked limbs and the squat shade of their canopy, where I imagined possibilities far away from my Arkansas home with its hemmed-in yard, that airless yard in which my breath was held, waiting for an escape route to be revealed. Twirling a tufted pink mimosa bloom, I became a tool-skirted ballerina, half listening as Aunt Evelyn drawled. Aunt Evelyn, my mother's sister, a vivacious daughter of the South, once famously teasing that she was 21 before she understood damn Yankee to be not a single word, but two. Aunt Evelyn, who nevertheless found no fault when I fled, opting instead to impress upon me the necessity of a smile, that life is empty without friends. Aunt Evelyn, whose death these 15 years has left a daily chronic ache, a memento, like this leaf I reach to pluck and damply press against my cheek. Thank you. I think of freedom dwindling and of my beautiful wings I think of mornings, dawn's early rise, and of green, language, and requirement. I think of laughter, nature's own, and of her longing for change. I think of promise, of expectation, and our focus on stillness, that confounded stillness. I think of time beyond the limits of self, and of duration, and of our simple needs, I think of cries for knowing, just knowing, and why life often appears false. I think of our cravings to receive and of our desires to know abundance. I think of life's many faces and how we shall succeed, each further than known. I think of finality and of blessedness and of rain, sweet, sweet rain, beyond measures, beyond knowing and beyond ourselves. Thank you. Two different colored woods divide my comfy living room in half. One darkly somber and one sleek, mahogany and Danish teak. My grandma's glass-doored cabinet stares down upon the sideboard's teak, which was my husband's when he died. The old and new are side by side. Each calls to me across the room. We're here, we're special. Why did you let in that out of fashion freak? Mahogany and Danish teak. My mind's eye strokes the tall old piece. Glass doors above, three drawers below. It holds noisemakers, photos, pride. The old and new are side by side. Within the teak lie yellow plates adorned with painted peasant folk, while songbooks help my heart to speak. Mahogany and Danish teak. Their layered memories compete. Their outsides neither mesh nor blend. 
two views of life, one tall, one wide, the old and new are side by side. Yet deep within there's harmony. They both hold family and song. Each voice has proved to be unique, mahogany and Danish teak. The strands of love and song live on, though sometimes seeming to collide through sliding doors and glassed antique. The old and new are side by side, mahogany and Danish teak. I call these shoppers grander than a herd of elk on a white plain, a school of salmon surging upriver. The stooped man pushing his walker by baby steps toward the sliding door took out a machine gun nest at Anzio to save his brother's lives. The woman with the wild henned hair and rolled down stockings ran off to Broadway to dance. The tattooed delivery boy pays his drunken mother's rent and tucks her into bed each night. A magnificent rack of antlers, the drive to leap dams, are gifts unearned. But the people exposed on this unforgiving blacktop chose their challenges. I'll put their bellows of defiance up against an elk's call any day. Trump the determination of a salmon with their, yes, I will. Thank you. Es brillisch war, die schlichte Toven wirten und wimmelten in Waben, und alle mimsige Burgoven, die Momen Rat ausgraben. Bewahre doch vor Jammerwoch die Zähne, Knirschen, Krallen, Kretzen, bewahre vor Jubjubvogel, vor frumiösen Bändesnetzchen. Er griff sein Worpels Schwertchen zu, er suchte lang das manchsam Ding, dann, stehend unter dem Tumtumbaum, er anzudenken fing. Als stand er tief in Andacht auf, des Jammerwochens Augenfeuer durch Tulgenwald mit Wiffe kam, ein Burbeln ungeheuer. Eins, zwei, eins, zwei, und durch und durch das Wurbelschwert zerschniffer schnuck. Da blieb es tot. Er, Kopf in Hand, geläumfisch zog zurück. Und schlugst du ja den Jammerwoch, umarme mich, mein bürmsches Kind. O Freudentage, o Hallo, Schlag, er kortelt froh gesinnt. Es brillisch war, die schlichte Toven wirten und wimmelten in Waben, und alle mümsige Burgoven, die Momen Rat ausgraben. Thank you. Lived and died. In history's context, that's how most of us will be memorialized. Oh, an occasional news clipping, so-and-so did such-and-such, -such, and a family genealogist might trace an occupation. But in the main, historically, will just be dates, 19 blank blank to 20 blank blank in our case. Yet, as I sit today, at this funeral mass, the church full of those this person touched, and remember my father's recent funeral and the comments after, I am reminded of our community history and how our individual acts touch and affect our communal growth and am reminded too to act accordingly. Thank you. Having checkpoint. Having come this far, she's crossing checkpoints in the flood of dawn. At noon, she bolts through bullets in the flames of the frontier. At midnight, can you hear her? At the border, dodging fire, she's crying help. Who can help? Having come home, she cannot find her home. 
Her family's flown the coop and gone to the camps. They said they'd be back in a shake, but in fact, it's been three generations. She's more than vexed. Her brother has five bullet wounds lodged above his heart securely in his shoulders. Her older sister needs six hours to get to work and six hours back, counting the interrogation at the checkpoint. Her younger brother is only a boy. She thought that he was going to the school, but he was going to the streets. He's learning names like stone and gun and bomb, one beat and martyr and revenge, two beats like suicide, that's three, and intifada, four, incendiary, five. He's learning names. She howls unfair in the wind, and no one whistles back, and there is nothing here but the other's house, built on the terrible rubble of the other's own insistent history, built upon the rubble that was once her room, her mother's and her father's rooms, the kitchen where they made tabbouleh with fresh mint, strong coffee black with lemon peel, and roasted watermelon seeds they cracked between their teeth, only the smell of bitter remains. Only the fear which rises in the acrid east. Only the kafia which roils and reminds in the wind. Only the wound that cannot hear the other's wound. The rustle of the other's sacred garments. Having come this far, she cannot even take a breath. She bawls like a baby in the desert. <clears throat> she pins the sheets of pain on her lines and the others' lines, which now are tangled and confused, torn and intertwined. Can you hear her? She's crying at the checkpoint. She won't take orders easily. She's fumbling for her papers and her pass. At the border, she finally proclaims her name is Whoa, whoa, and she will not sharpen perpetual weapons of war, not for her father, not for her brother, not for her friend, no, not for her son. She is whoa, whoa, she is whoa, whoa, she will not sharpen perpetual weapons of war. She will not. She will not take this jack ack ack this jack ack ack this jack ack ack hammer of war she holds a vase of sow wow 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 her song will circle her row wow 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 she is whoa whoa she is whoa whoa she is whoa not for her father not for her son not not for this river of red, which flows its way through generations of her men. She is bleeding now. She will say amen. She's whoa, 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 whoa. Who can hear her? Who can know? She cries like a sieve in the wind. Having come this far, who can hear her? Who can know? Thank you. My grandfather was a man of tremendous dinosaur feet, or so it seemed to me, small child with my small feet. While grandfather always walked in giant steps ahead, walked fast to slow and slow to fast and always full of purpose, respectful of each step he'd ever taken along the way. And the thing I like best about my grandfather, a man of tremendous dinosaur feet, where the Sunday walks I'd take with him at the crack of dawn, he put his big shoes on, large, heavy, black, and full of soul, and he'd stride in them, as would a mastodon stalking the sidewalks, nudging me along. And he would strut slowing to stride and then to stroll so he could take it all in so nice and slow. 
Grandfather's eyes would squint out smiles at rising sunshine, and he'd whistle melodies of native birds out through his teeth. He'd murmur deep throat sighs so sweet and low, teaching me to pay attention to life's treasures that we'd see. The noisy blue jay in the tree, the fire engine whizzing by, the cat across the road he swore he'd just seen dancing in the sky, showing the magic of each new thing we'd find along the street, always making my life more interesting than a painting by Magritte. We might find a shiny silver coin to press against our palms, a colored stone to put within our sack, or a wayward feather of one small bird taking turns to wear it in our hair or behind our ear. And we'd always reach for the bubblegum wrappers of bazooka, picking out the funny ones that would really make us laugh, then making up our own jokes as we were walking, blowing out our laughter like we were blowing golden bubbles out into the stratosphere. Yes, we found many treasures while we were walking, but little did I ever think back then that the greatest treasure that I ever had was a time spent with my grandfather and all the pleasure in the walks I had with him. and pear, apricot, then the 